This week, thousands of students from across North America will gather in St. Louis, Missouri for North American Youth Congress. This biennial student conference is the largest UPCI-sponsored event in North America. Dr. David K. Bernard explains what will be happening at North American Youth Congress and how this event has become so impactful to the apostolic Pentecostal movement. Welcome to Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, a podcast dedicated to helping modern-day believers live out the teachings of the first century church. This podcast is part of the teaching ministry of Dr. David K. Bernard. Dr. Bernard has dedicated his life to studying the Bible and helping believers apply its message to their daily lives. In Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, Dr. Bernard answers your questions about what the Bible teaches and how those teachings apply to everyday life. Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you enjoy this podcast, we encourage you to check out Dr. David K. Bernard's books. Dr. Bernard has written more than 30 books on biblical theology and Christian living and leadership. Visit PentecostalPublishing.com and search David Bernard for a list of available titles. Enter promo code DKB10 at checkout to save 10% on your order. That's PentecostalPublishing.com, promo code DKB10 to save 10% at checkout. Later this week, students from across North America are coming here to St. Louis for North American Youth Congress, which for those who don't know, that's a biennial biennial conference hosted by UPCI Youth Ministries. We're expecting that we'll have more than 30,000 people in attendance, which will make it the, and it it is the largest UPCI sponsored event in North America. Last time we held NAYC in St. Louis in 2019, we had about 36,000 people who attended. As general superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church, what do you see as the benefits of an event like North American Youth Congress? Well, certainly North American Youth Congress is a wonderful event uh, that helps fulfill the mission of the church, and I believe it fulfills the will of God. So it's based on a fundamental Christ- Christian principle. We see this at the outset, the birthday of the Christian church, Acts 2, 120 were filled with the Spirit, 3,000 were added that same day. Quite a large crowd were gathered. And then Acts 2.42 says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. So they worked together. Not only did they agree doctrinally, but they, they they had fellowship together. They broke bread together, which speaks of communion or the Lord's Supper, but also fellowship meals. And they prayed together. Then if you read the rest of the chapter, it said they went in, from the temple, which they met outdoors in the temple grounds where they could have thousands of people as the day of Pentecost itself. And then they went from house to house in small groups, house churches. There were no church buildings, but there were churches in various people's homes across the city. And they would have devotions and prayer meetings and and Bible studies, praising God and having favor with all the people. So the early church practiced a meeting in small groups, as well as large venues. I believe it's very apostolic. And this is not simply uh, what we think of as one local church. Everybody knows we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And that's we apply that primarily to the local church where where we live, as we should. But there's nothing in the Bible that says assembling together, having fellowship, praying together, you know, breaking bread together. That's only one location of one physical building in one city. But that principle, as you read throughout the New Testament, is in venues small and large. And so I think Youth Congress is an example of where we do this on a large scale. It's apostolic. It's positive. We should have fellowship when we can. And so what are the practical benefits? It is biblical. So if we obey scripture, we can expect there to be many benefits. And we should even do more as the coming of the Lord approaches, according to Hebrews 10. But it does a lot of things. First of all, it shows the typical young person that may not have had much experience in life or in church, may have come from a small church or a medium-sized church or maybe a small town. 
uh, maybe a church that meets in a home, but they can be exposed to something bigger than they've ever seen before. They realize the church, the work of God is much bigger. So it expands their vision, expands their faith, expands their concept of world missions. Uh, It also uh, gives a a very powerful, positive example. We're facing an increasingly secular culture, an anti-Christian culture, where our speech, our dress, our social media is all different from the world, is all under attack from the world. Our choice of amusements, what we read, what we watch, what we go online to seek is all different from what the world says. Our values are different. Teachings of marriage, family, sexual morality, uh, even basic values of loving our country, all those things are under attack. And so uh, a young person, a young adult that may be in one town or one church and the predominant influence is negative, but when they go to Youth Congress, they can see there are thousands and tens of thousands of other young people, teenagers and young adults that dress the way I do, that talk the way I talk, that enjoy the, what I enjoy, that worship the way I worship, that believe what I believe, that have the same experience, that can be a powerful example to counteract all the negative examples. Yes, the Holy Ghost is real. Yes, it's right to worship God in spirit and truth. So the power of positive example is tremendous. Another thing is, of course, God will honor your faith and your prayer wherever. If there are two or three gathered in my name, Jesus said, I'll be there. But there is something about gathering in a large group with a common purpose. In fact, you notice the day of Pentecost, they were with one mind. They were in one place with one mind and one accord. And so there is a power of unity that increases our faith. When we pray together in a large group, when we worship together in a large group, It can elevate us beyond the average typical experience of worship and prayer. There's a certain liberty. We release inhibitions. Maybe we're, uh, you know, among in a small church or even a large church where everybody knows us and we know everybody. uh, And there's a certain culture. Every city, every state, and even every local church has its own ways of doing things, which is fine. But being exposed to people of different backgrounds, different cultures, different ethnicities, and yet the common expression of worship and the common experience of the outpouring of the Spirit, that can break something open, especially for a young person. Their mind can expand. Their faith can expand. They release negative inhibitions, and they believe with their heart, not only with their head, and they express the freedom to receive the power of God, to receive a miracle, to receive gifts and callings and visions that will last their whole life. Uh, Not only will they be personally blessed, but they will be prepared to bless others. So you can expect that there will be miracles, signs, wonders, gifts, callings, burdens, passions that will be imparted that could happen in another setting, but can be accelerated and intensified in the life of of a young person. So yes, I highly recommend that every young person, every young adult, if you can go to youth Congress, but when you go, go to pray, go to worship, go to pursue holiness, go to serve others, whether it's fellow attendees that you can pray for and encourage and help or in the city, if you have an opportunity to bless people, to invite them to church, to, to serve maybe some of their physical needs, um, Sometimes we organize outreaches and distributing food to uh, hungry or homeless people and so forth, uh, and they will be doing doing that. So I'm saying go with that mindset, not just to be blessed or not just to have fellowship or not just to have fun, although certainly it's great to have fun in fellowship. And that's another benefit where you can actually have wholesome, godly fun in a big setting where your secular friends talk about partying and getting drunk and saying all, all night, you can have more fun than that in a group of fellow believers. So you can experience a highlight uh, of fun in fellowship. But what I'm saying is go to hear from God, to worship God, to receive from God, to receive a miracle, to minister to your fellow believers and minister to the city and be a good example and witness that you could change that city. If you go with the right purpose, 
the youth congress will change the city and will change the churches represented, but also change you. And so uh, I hope to see you there. I'm going to be there and I'm going to participate. And I know I'll be blessed and hopefully I can be a blessing. Thank you for listening to this episode of Apostolic Life in the 21st Century. If you enjoy this podcast, please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. We also appreciate it when you share apostolic life in the 21st century with a friend or family member. And make plans to join us again next time as we look at how the Bible applies to everyday life.